everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Oh, Nikki Kinzer. Uh, we realize that this, I know it's it's late for us here in Oregon, but we realized that last night that it's it, this would have been day one of school for our kids, or at least our high school kid. Right. And... I, we just found ourselves, our, my, my wife and I are, are laying in bed last night thinking, oh my goodness, it is it is upon us. Now it's two weeks later, but uh, we have to figure out how to do this. And my daughter goes to college online in a whole new way in about three weeks. Now, is she, I have a question about that. Is she going to stay home or is she actually going to go to where the college is? You know, it was, that has been... It, it's pins and needles for us right now. In fact, as we record tomorrow, uh, we have a Zoom meeting with the administration. Uh, it's, it's not, I mean, not with us. The administration is doing a presentation on, you know, current status of the school and what's going on and what we can expect. But at this point, we were given a choice that if you check the catalog and all of your classes are online because that's the that's the model they're doing right now is like you have a choice or, or it, it's that some of your classes will be online some of them will be campus based there is a better than odds chance that you're going to look at your schedule and all your classes will be online because so few classes are on are available on campus if that is the case they give you the option of waiving the first year residency requirement um right. you know you put in a little form and say, I, I still want to go to class, but I'm not going to do it on campus. I'm mm-hmm. going to stay home. I'm going to, you know, do it. there. There will be a lecture. They'll be at the regular times mm-hmm. uh, right. that are on the class. And then you'll have the rest of your day to do your schoolwork, research, et cetera. Um, get a job. <laughs> So, <laughs> right. so, you know, yeah. it's, it is a real puzzle. So that's, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about transitioning back to school, especially for our adult uh, listeners and uh, adult students. Um, what does it mean right now? And what are you going to do with your ADHD on the way? Woof. Woof is right. I mean... Uh, so before we dig into that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show on the website, of course, or subscribe to the mailing list, and we will send you an email with the latest episode each week. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And, you know, I got to say, as I was uh, I was looking through our Patreon this morning, I just... Uh, it is. I'm, I'm filled with such joy at the people who are uh, continuing to subscribe, even as we come back from our our silence and our hiatus. And so, special thanks to uh, um, to Vicky and Whitney and Julia and Shay and uh, uh, Jeremy. Welcome and Jason. Jason's brand new. Uh, they, just a few of the names of folks who have, who are, are subscribing and joining our show community over on Patreon. Uh, I hope that uh, you, all of you new folks, uh, jump in. Join us for the live stream of this very podcast. You can you can watch Nikki and I screw up royally every single <laughs> week. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, opportunity. And you get an ad-free version of this show that comes to you uh, by way of your very own Patreon RSS feed. If you haven't checked that out, even our old, I find even our old uh, long time uh, subscribers forget that they have their very own podcast feed that gives them their very own unique and special gems of podcast from us. Uh, for just a few dollars a month, you join the community. You can get access to our online community on Discord or on our Facebook group. Uh, it, this is listener-supported podcasting. Uh, if there ever, ever was one, uh, your contributions help us stay afloat and continue to grow what we are doing. So thank you. We appreciate you, every one of you. Uh, Visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Before we go into back to school, I do want to talk about study hall. Which, which kind is of the perfect is, thing, right? Yeah, you need a, if like, you're going back to school, exactly. you're going to need a study you're hall. You're going to need a study hall. That's right. And even if you're not going back to school, but you just need four hours of good, hardcore, productive time with people 
like you that are trying to get things done, study hall is a great thing to do. So we uh, are starting up our next sessions. Uh, They will begin on September 17th. And I have an early bird special that is going to be good up until September 17th. So um, if you would like to subscribe for uh, those 10 sessions that are coming up, you will get a discount. And for our Patreon members, the Supreme Level actually gets this for free. And so that's a little benefit to them too. So uh, to to learn more about Study Hall, please uh, visit the website at Take Control adhd.com and uh it's under services i think right you'll put the link coaching. In the show it's under coaching under coaching yeah 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 we'll make it easy for you to find uh but yes we are also now going to be talking about back to school because it certainly has a whole new meaning than it did yes, it does. last fall <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, there really is no back for many people. Um, and one thing I do want to talk about, just to be clear, is I do not work with um, high school students or or uh, children or kids, whatever you want to call them, uh, <laughs> Small <humans>. under 18. <laughs> right. I have my own. I have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I work with college students. And so... I just want to be clear that I'm coming from a perspective of college students. And so if people are having questions about how to manage school and work and young kids, I am not going to be the best person for you to refer to. Uh, now, our Discord people might have some great ideas. So if you're in Discord, if you're a part of our Patreon community, I certainly want you to reach out and ask those questions. Um, but I just want to be very clear that it's not an age group that I work with. I don't have enough knowledge to even really give you advice because I don't want to give you the wrong advice. Right. Um, but I can talk to you about college. I can talk to you about adult learning. And I can talk to you about uh, this whole um, weird thing that's going on. And I'm telling all of my college students that I currently work with, because just as you explained, Pete, some of them have in or some of them have online classes. Some of them have to go to lab that's on campus. Some of them have. I mean, it's just every college is a little bit different. Um, and I keep telling them to just expect the unexpected because really at any time the school, you know, could shut down. Right. Right. Yeah. It, well, shut down, change models. Like it, this is this is the reason this conversation I think is so important is because it calls on all of us as students, teachers living with ADHD to be supremely adaptable. Right. And that is not a thing that we are n- noted for in our bouquet <laughs> of skills. Right. It's hard to do that. And so I, I think, um, you know, getting distracted by circumstances, which we'll talk about, talk about and uh, having difficulty making transitions, that's the real anchor for for the world we live in right now. Absolutely, absolutely. So today I, uh, I'm i gonna share with you four of the common issues that I've seen in the last few months. And what I hope to do is give uh, our listeners a little bit of inspiration, some hope that they can make this work. It is possible. Uh, one of the, the biggest, or I, I would say hardest parts that I've seen clients struggle with is the transition between work and school and home life. So here it, it's all kind of combined in one because you're in the same spot, right? So Mm -hmm. we recently talked about transitions just like, a week ago, two weeks ago. Right. right. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into great detail because it's kind of the same advice. Uh, but there are a couple of things I do want you to consider uh, in, in regards to school and making that transition a little bit easier. Um, so the first thing I want you to think about is how much time do you think you need to transition from one thing to another? And that is a really hard question to answer. And so what I want people to do is actually practice and time themselves and do some different activities and really go into it with kind of this investigative type of uh, persona of, you know, how much time do I need to transition? What kinds of things do I like to do that will help that transition easier? And then you can answer that question. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? 
Yeah, totally. And I, I think, you know, keeping a, a schedule, not a schedule, but like a scheduled diary, right? To, right. to really figure out. And we've talked about the, the importance of time tracking. Y- you know, these situations, we're not asking you to track every minute of every day forever, but pick some sort of of increment. Like this week, I'm making a major transition or I'm gearing up to go back to school. I'm going to time these major activities in my life so I can start to figure out how to put this puzzle together. Right. Absolutely. And make it easier for you. Yeah. You know, especially because it's not just going back to school online, but for those who are having some sort of in-person cohort relationship, that can be incredibly difficult, too. Right. Because now you're mixing an online environment and you have to figure out how to leave your house on time. Building and travel time just to get to your living room is one thing. But now you have to start thinking about something you haven't had to think about in potentially a long time. And that is good Lord traffic. uh, Right. Everything. (laughs) Who knows? Everything. All of those things that we haven't had to deal with. Um, Yeah. Parking. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, So. Mm -hmm. complications. Yes. So one of the things I do want to give you is just some examples that I tell my students that can help the transition to, and this is again, where that kind of time tracking is. Maybe this week you say, okay, for 15 minutes, I'm going to take a walk or I'm going to do some kind of exercise or just play with your pet for 15 Mm -hmm. minutes or 10 minutes, whatever you think you need to do to kind of wind yourself down. A lot of people lost their commute, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people lost their commute to school. So this isn't just work, but it's also to school where you could have had some downtime. So now we have to create that. So maybe it is playing a couple of games on your phone, you know, shutting down the computer and just letting yourself play something without feeling any guilt just for that kinds of, you know, that kind of transition. So yeah, those and, are and some I think, things. Yeah, I would totally add that your perception of 15 minutes is going to be w- wildly different from somebody else's, right? That's all right. time is, is is perception of of the passing of, of you know, events. And it, it may feel really, really fast. It may feel interminable. Uh, exactly. But don't judge that, right? All we're trying to, to, to do is to habituate you. This is what this feels like. This is mm-hmm. what 15 minutes feels like playing with the dog kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about is scheduling. So it is really hard to keep straight what class you're supposed to be in on what day and time. Um, And this, this is where I'm going to kind of throw in my two cents. If you're, if you're a parent juggling your kids' schedules, it gets even more complicated, right? Because now you have a child in elementary school, middle Mm -hmm. school, high school. It can be really confusing of where everyone's supposed to be when everybody does it a little bit differently. So one of the things that I would suggest on just keeping the schedule straight, um, and I did do this for my college students too, is to get a big wall or desk calendar. Um, and what you want to do is especially, and this is especially true if you have a lot of stuff, sev- if you have like several schedules to manage, right? Because you really mm-hmm. want to be able to visualize w- what's happening with each person <laughs> and, um, and, and get a large one so that everybody can see it. So if you're a family of, of uh, four and you've got two kids that are in, in, uh, uh, school, you know, you could color code each kid. So they each have a color and it shows like where they need to be, um, when on one, d- on what day. Um, and now if you're a college student and you're by yourself, you could color code your classes if you'd like. Um, whatever resonates with you, however, your brain will look at this calendar and see right off the bat that it's Monday and this is where I need to be. I know with my kids' schedules, they're in high school school and they have an A day and they have a B day and then they have Wednesday off and then they have an A day and then they have a B day. It gets really confusing. So we're going to have a big calendar that just says A, B, off, A, B, (laughs) right? And just be able to see that. So um, you just want to have something in in front of you. I would not use the calendar as your to-do list, right? We've talked about this before. I think if, if you do this, you're running the risk of it being way too cluttered, especially if you have more than one person. Um, and, and then it will really stop meaning anything to you. So this calendar is just for you to see your weekly schedule and you can look at it as often as you need to. Um, but I suggest looking at it every day because it's really easy to forget if it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Saturday. You may think it's Saturday. It's time to go to school and it's not. Right, so, right. <laughs> right. 
tech tip that just it just occurs to me that this feature it's been around for a long time but a lot of folks I think haven't discovered it uh, in Google Calendar it used to be if you wanted to create a calendar with a different color you'd have to create a separate calendar right so oh, that you'd right. have uh, my personal calendar, my work calendar, my kids calendar, and they're all shared, whatever. Well, if, if you just if you don't want all those calendars, uh, Google has for some time given you the option to color code by event on your own calendar. So you can say, I want to I'm going to, you know, right click on this event and make this meeting purple even though the main color is blue, so that I can look at my calendar and see that's, uh, you know, there are meetings there. Well, you can also do that, obviously, by class. So if you want to create a repeating event that is your um, uh, bio class, you could make all your bio uh, classes green, and they'll just pop up on your calendar. They'll show uh, and, and stand out from the rest, of your, um, the rest of your calendar. I am with Nikki. I'm the whiteboard fan for just, like, big planning events. But from day-to-day -day scheduling, if you happen to want to move online, mm -hmm. uh, uh, consider color coding big blocks of events in order to help you keep it straight visually. Absolutely. Choosing the right space. So what I what I let my my college students know is that there is this like statistic in the world that says that if you study in different places, your retention rate is actually higher because you will remember where, where you learned something depending on where you were when you learned it. So I always think that that's good because I think it's a, it's good that we retain information. It's good that we have variety because, you know, the common ADHD -er doesn't want to be bored. So I I actually suggest that you identify a few different places in your home that you like to work. Where I, what I would avoid though is studying in a place that would make you fall asleep. So I would suggest, <laughs> yeah. you know, under not, under a shady tree. <laughs> yeah. Or on a hammock <laughs> yeah, in <right>. your bed <laughs> on a really rocking. comfy couch. <laughs> Maybe on a boat in the middle of a quiet lake to the sound of loons. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. So we got to be smart <laughs> that we want to make sure that, you know, we're setting you setting yourself up for success. So we do, you know, if you don't like quiet, then definitely have some white noise. But if you do better with quiet, then, you know, have a quiet space, whatever works for you. But definitely identify a few different areas that you can move around. Uh, right now, it's still pretty nice you know, in, in lots of areas of the United States and in the world. So if you can go outside, great, go outside. Um, but I just think, you know, that's something to think about is is where where do you uh, work that is a good balance of being focused, but being engaged in enough in the material where you're able to walk around or write or do whatever it is that you need to do. But one of the things I've got to tell people, and they know it, and they understand it, but they still don't do it. And that is eliminating your distractions that you are very clear are distracting you. And that's social media. That's the phones, the iPads, the people. Um, so we do have to be really, you know, I, I think mindful that if your phone is distracting you, if email or social media, Snapchat, whatever the kids are doing these days, Pete, uh, mm -hmm. It's all TikTok, Nikki. Yeah, well, that's it's true. TikTok it is. All it's all TikTok. Down. Yeah. Um, you know, if you need to study, you got to get those things out of your site and uh, and be able to to focus without having them distract you. Well, you know, this would be a good time, I think, for to interject a little bit about just specifically school, the pandemic, and the media. Because yes. I, I think this is, this is so important. If if you want to find it. You know, you're all living in the same world I am. You could get it weighed into just some truly awful sources of information and non-information about what it's like to go to school right now. Uh, I I have a couple of sources that I follow. I, I guess I fear follow them, right? Like, mm -hmm. I just, they're professors, they're educators, they're statisticians, they're epidemiologists. And I read that stuff and I realized as I was preparing notes for this, th that is fundamentally counter to my objective in life is following that stuff is doom doom scrolling right right um, so you know you got to ask yourself does what i'm doing right now scrolling through my phone uh, at midnight before i go to bed does this help me move my degree forward does this help me learn in the subject area in which i am studying 
Or does this help me plan for my immediate to midterm future? And I'm talking about super practical stuff, right? It might not be academic, but knowing how your school is handling housing and quarantines, that might be very useful for for planning uh, your living and transportation arrangements and all that, right? The ideological part is likely not useful. So the vast majority of day-to-day reporting and sharing about the world we're living in is a distraction. If there was ever a time to buckle down, take care of yourself, and ignore these unhealthy incoming signals, it's right now. So focus on sources that tell you what, not why. What, not why. Find the buses will be leaving campus every two hours this week instead of every four hours so that you can plan your, your day, right? Right. But that's just a clear what. Don't look for sources that are now get, saying the buses will be leaving every two hours because the liberal conservative green pirate bus union is shaking down the criminal administration for an extra buck an hour. Right. That is right. incorporating <laughs> ideology that is damaging to you. You don't yes. need those kinds of things. Yes. So, you know, when you're focused on your education, getting that degree, you need precious little why in your brain that leaves you more what you need in your life to get the job done. So, so um, I, I also know that everything I just said is is really hard to ignore most of the time. Uh, so I would just throw in, find a decompression activity. Don't go to sleep with any of this stuff on your brain. Don't don't even watch John Oliver. It's a comedy show last week tonight, but it's not funny. Right. Right. <laughs> it's just more like pick a pick something, a show or a podcast or a book that's light as a feather to to blast the bad stuff out of your brain before bed. So. Totally agree. And I just have to say on a side note, the last two weeks I have uh, taken a break from watching the news in the morning because of the we had the Democratic um, uh, nominations and then yeah, we had the, the Republic nominations yeah. and I didn't want to watch any of them. And so I, I just didn't watch the news and I haven't for the last two weeks in the morning because that's usually what I do. It's kind of my sure. routine. And I've been listening to music instead. And I have to tell you, it is a different it feels different when you are listening to music and you're enjoying what you're what you're listening to. It's almost it's just like it actually puts fun in the morning. Whereas yeah. when you lose when you watch the news, there is no fun. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. It's a very different mentality. So I I agree. I think you you got to take care of yourself and uh, um. If you yeah, you know what if you that. play an instrument, don't forget that you play an instrument. Because right. I'll tell you, uh, for me, sitting around and noodling around on the guitar or the piano is is an amazing way to clear your head and Absolutely. activate some neurons that might not be firing regularly. That's right. That's right. All right. So we have one last thing that I want to talk about, but it's a big thing. It seems like a big thing. It's a big thing. And it's probably, I would say, outside of the transitioning piece, because that's a real struggle. It's probably the second kind of biggest challenge that I hear from college students that I've been working with is is staying focused. They're really afraid of this. Not so much that they're not doing it. They're just, they fear it, you know, coming mm-hmm. up into, into the semester. Um, so I uh, want to give you some ideas about staying focused. I have seen every single way that a professor can do online learning, and it doesn't matter what university you go to, each professor or in that university will do it a different way. Uh, There is no like, you know, you go to University of Oregon or Oregon State University and this is the way that they do it. Nope, uh uh-uh. Each individual professor is different. So the first thing I suggest is that you get very, very clear about what your professor expects in each of your classes and uh, really understand you know what what's going on here are they okay with you not being on live online live right so there are some professors that will say you don't need to show up online when it's a live lecture you can watch the recording but then there's other people that will say we're not recording it you have to come you know on you have to be here live um is the lecture online but the lab is in person i've seen that a lot um is the homework due online but the quizzes are done during the live zoom call i mean there are so many different things that can happen here so um definitely you know figure out each uh each class and what they expect from you uh i also suggest watching any live zoom calls 
and treating them like a regular class on campus. So Mm -hmm. if they're scheduled, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m., even if there's a recording, I still suggest that you go at 9 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you put that into your schedule and just treat it like you were going on campus. It will keep your schedule consistent, which is a good thing. It will add Mm -hmm. that structure that you need and uh, you won't miss any important updates because that's the other piece. If you're not really paying attention or you're not listening to the whole recording, because I know a lot of students think, well, I already know this. I can fast forward or I don't, I can skip this um, lecture. There are a lot of important updates that are happening during those live calls and you need to know what they are and be paying attention for that. Um, Plus, it is good for you to show up um, in case you need something later from that professor. So now we're talking about accommodations, right? So you're uh-huh. you're not uh, you're working on something and it's not going as fast as you thought it would. If you've been showing up every day and you've had that relationship or they, that professor sees you, you know they're probably going to be more likely to to extend or help you in some way that they wouldn't be so uh, excited to help you if this is the first time they've met you. Yeah, that, that is an underestimated or an undervalued, uh, I think, um, currency when it comes to any education relationship, but particularly online relationship. And I've been teaching online since, oh God, the beginning of the 2000s. And so right. I, I think it's, it, it is one of those things that students often forget that there is a human being on the other side of that online program. Even if they're watching that human being on video, it's mm-hmm. still a layer of abstraction that clouds the personal relationship there. And so for you, the student, to go the extra mile and build goodwill and, yeah. and take that step, whatever step that is for you, to maintain goodwill, to maintain a relationship, that will take you so far, so in, far. in just being successful uh, in school with your individual classes. Yes, and absolutely. don't forget, your faculty members will write you recommendations when you graduate if you need to get that job. So goodwill can take you even farther. Even farther. That's right. Now, in most situations, I do see that most classes are being recorded, whether there's a live lecture or not. There's only been a handful where I've had people tell me that they're not. So in, you know, for the most part, you can probably rely on this. And I say, take advantage of it. Because if you do lose focus during the live uh, Zoom call, you know, and and you know, you missed something or whatever, then go back and you can and you can watch those recordings. Um, and and uh, it can also help with the note taking, right? So if you know that the uh, class is being recorded, you can kind of e- evaluate, you know, how well are you taking notes in class? What what can you do to make that better? Knowing that you can go back um, can be a very positive thing because you don't have that anxiety of feeling like you have to write everything down. Um, But the downside of recordings is that they can be this great trap of avoidance. Oh, well, I I can just do this later. I don't need to pay attention to this. Um, But we know, and I wish I had some study to back me up here, but I can just tell you as an ADHD coach for college students, we know that we don't go back and listen to the recordings. It just doesn't happen unless you absolutely have to for some reason. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. so it, it's something that you just don't get into that trap of thinking I can do it later. Um, I, I, I have a I have a trick. Yeah. <laughs> can, I talk to you? can I tell you a trick? Yes. It's kind of new to me. So anybody can set up a YouTube channel. Right. Anybody can do that. You can uh-huh. you can all do it. And if you verify your account, which just means like, do you have a verified email address? And there's an, there are instructions to put that together. You can actually upload your own videos that are multi-hours in length, right? They're just very, very long, right? And so say you have a two-hour lecture, and you you can take that lecture if the instructor gives you access to download it, upload it to your YouTube account, mark it as private, and then using the YouTube app on your phone, you can listen to it at up to double speed. So you can re-engage with the material much more quickly than when it was initially delivered to you. And you can keep an archive of your very own uh, video lectures uh, on your own personal YouTube channel. And 
it's just, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty super nerdy. And, but once you get the infrastructure set up, once you figure out kind of what is your routine to do this, um, you, you might create a nice library of online lectures that could really support your, your long-term studying. Uh, I might do like a mini workshop on yeah, like screen, great. screen recording. Like you could record your own screen <laughs> of a lecture, save the video, upload it to your own YouTube channel. And, um, and then you have, an online access of your course lectures. I think you just uh, zeroed in on our September workshop for the Supreme <laughs> members. Really, honestly, write little, that down. A little how-to, right? That's okay. Yeah, All right. write that down. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that's great. And I, I love the double speed, right? Who doesn't love that? <laughs> yeah, right. Especially so after smart. you've already engaged with a live, if the live event, right? You yes. can, like, I, it's so valuable to keep this, archive of stuff and YouTube is free, right? You verify right. your channel and and you're good to go. So. Absolutely. A uh, couple of last things that I want to bring up about staying focused, especially during lecture, uh, because that, that can be the hardest thing. Um, you know, bring a fidget toy with you. So when you're listening to the lecture, you can do something, right? You have your and you don't have a, or... a faculty member glaring at you because no. they can see you with your fidget. Yeah, Just and it go can to even be loud. Down. Yeah, because you can go ahead. put it on mute. So it bring can a vuvuzela like, for all we care. Heck yeah, right? whatever you want. Uh, but definitely, you know, if you're fidgety and you want that kind of extra movement, bring it to the lecture. Stand up during the lecture. Get a stand up, sit down desk, or just like what I did for a long time before I got one is I just sort of made one up <laughs> with yeah. boxes, right? But um, do do that because it does help you stay more alert when you're standing up. We just know that. Um, ask questions, you know, keep yourself active and, and engaged into the conversation as much as you can. So ask questions, take notes. Um, again, we want to eliminate distractions. Put those blockers on your computer. Uh, you know about those blockers. Repeat those things that will keep you away from certain websites while you're oh, on yeah. your computer. Yeah, right. You have to put some of those in the notes. Yeah, because that can be really, you know, distracting if you're on your computer and you get these notifications or whatever. Uh, but this is the biggest thing is you have ADHD and you will get distracted and lectures are not usually fun and exciting. They will get boring and you will lose focus and that's okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up. Um, just guide yourself back when you notice it and put your attention back and do the best that you can. Right. And if you don't get everything the first time around, it's all right because you probably have a textbook. You're probably going to have a recording. You're probably going to have classmates that are going to help you study. I mean, there's so many other things involved that ju don't beat yourself up over it. Uh, like everything else, don't forget you have these skills. If you've been listening to this podcast, from early on, you've heard us talk about this before. Apply the same mentality mm -hmm. uh, to going back to school. You're okay. You're not alone. Nope. Everybody's dealing with it. It's going to be hard right. for a little while. You're yeah. going to get better at it. Yeah. And that's all something right. I want to say to all the parents out there. And I wish, I really do wish, because you know, I love helping people. And I love <laughs> talking to people and I love inspiring people. And I wish I had the knowledge that I know other people have that I want them to share. And hopefully we can get some of those people on the show to to help share with the younger ones. But those those people out there that have those younger kids and they're trying to balance it all, man, we are there with you in spirit, you know, uh, hoping for the best and like you said it will get better it will you'll get into some kind of groove um and uh just stay positive because we'll get we'll get through it you know one way or the other it's all new to everybody yeah so good stuff just thank some, you some so much there, yeah Pete. joy just my heart joy. goes out to you you know it's, oh god it's so hard I <laughs> get it it's so hard uh, uh but uh you're doing great you're doing great fam that's right <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We deeply appreciate your time and your attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.